Today, we're going to be talking about video editing, making your own reels or TikToks, vertical video for your social media to promote your work. This one I published already on Instagram and over on TikTok. Wow. This one is just like, you know, splicing together clips from my process and putting a voiceover that's kind of compelling. I'm going to show you today how I assembled that from the beginning. And I like to have this Premiere Pro project It's called 0723. July content and I just have sequences where I have all the different reels that I'm making for the month because I tend to reuse clips. If you look here, I have the sequences with everything, but then I also have the same labeled bins of footage. So then I'll just have like Paris footage. Like I didn't originally have this in here because it's my July content, but I airdropped it over and added it so that I could reference it because it does play a big part in this kind of product line. It's pretty well organized. All of my video content is vertical. If you go over to window and then workspaces and hit vertical, this is the default layout of the vertical workspace. And if your vertical workspace doesn't look like mine for whatever reason, hit window workspace and then hit reset to save layout. And that'll kind of pop it back to normal. I have two sequences visible, one with like a ton of my clips or with one version of the edit. And then I want to have the second version of the edit, one version for TikTok and one version for YouTube shorts because YouTube shorts is only a minute. Go window workspaces save as new workspaces like James said and I could say vertical and then double sequence every time I want two sequences now I'll have it there get the workspace all secured before you move on start with your narration I prefer to record directly into Premiere Pro because it kind of gets me started once I record in here the first thing that I do is add this voiceover and I'm gonna add it on my second track because usually on the first track I like to have the audio from the clips I go over to Premiere Preferences Audio Hardware and you want to make sure that your inputs are correct. If you also go over to the audio preferences, you want to make sure you have this selected, the mute input during timeline recording. If you don't have that selected, you're going to hear your recording as you're recording it. And so you have so like, you double have like double voice in your head plus the, your own thoughts. Once that's selected, there is already this little cute little button here, voice over record, click that. And you start getting this countdown here, it starts recording everything that I'm saying as soon as you hit the space button on your keyboard it will stop and then it starts recording everything that I'm saying with, and perfect. that track gets automatically added to your project. So I tend to have a recorded audio bin that I kind of just push everything into. Wherever you put your playhead, that's where it's gonna start recording at. Once I have a take that I really like, which here you can tell in the actual editing, I took two different parts of the script. And the great thing here is you can actually go over to the text editor and go into the transcript and edit the transcript transcript using the text-based editing. I kind of really like to do it at this stage because it's not going to cut any of my clips because I don't have any clips. In text-based editing, I could just decide maybe I don't want to mention this and I can just highlight and delete it because I threw that other track underneath. It's also affecting that previous track. Here, if you see these three dots, there's point three seconds we can just highlight that ellipses and remove it by clicking delete i have here a launch poster footage this is all the footage i took while creating this poster set what I like to do too when I'm about to uh, start adding the cuts to go along with my footage is I tend to create a new sequence or I just duplicate the one I have. Duplicate all clips. I'm going to open it up and go back to my footage and just grab all the footage that I think I might need to look at for this. Hit shift and select all of that footage and just drag it into my sequence. It's all different settings. The sequence settings that I'm working on right now are sequence settings 1080 by 1920 because if you're working on vertical videos for social media, you need to export them at that scale anyway because if you export them higher, they're just going to get compressed and be heavy files and look just not as good as they could. I have some 4K footage in here, which is probably gonna look extremely close up like that. Try and find that 4K footage, effect controls and hit scale, type in 50. And now it's at the scale that I actually want it at. I'm gonna right click that clip, copy, select all the C clips, right click, paste attributes, motion, hit okay. And now all my 4K footage is the right dimensions. The first thing that I say here, I think is, I finally opened up my own print shop clip for that, add a marker, not there. I'm gonna select 
the sequence, not the clip, and hit M. And now I have a little marker there. I'm going to look for like a clip where I'm showing off the prints. That way people understand like, oh, these are some new prints. Oh, I have these. Copy that clip, drag it in, and then edit it. Maybe I should start with something like that. So I would just cut using the razor tool. So I just have a shortcut on my mouse. But if you hit the razor tool or C on your keyboard, you have this razor you can trim. I'm going to go a little further, maybe here, do another trim. I'm going to delete the excess and now I'm going to drag it over to the beginning of my sequence. It's a little bigger than I needed it. Maybe I'll trim it even further to kind of just the action point here. And then I go like that, hit razor and delete the excess. So now if I play it with the voiceover, I finally opened up my own print shop. So that kind of works to showcase that. But I'm just showing you this is the process that I go through. I look at all my clips and then decide which ones I'm going to use. So these are the selections I ended up making that go along with my narration. You can see I just grabbed footage from all these different bins that I have and kind of tried to make it match the narration. I think that's one of the easier ways to get started with voiceover is to just match what you're saying with what you're seeing. I finally opened up my own print shop. Even though I always wanted to do this, I never knew where to begin. So this time I went back to my sketchbook and found these drawings from my trip to Paris earlier this year. And I was like, why don't I actually use these for something instead of letting them rot in my sketchbook? I started off by redrawing them so I could get cleaner scans and bringing them into Photoshop to clean them up. And after a few design iterations, changing layouts and colors and testing prints, I finally landed on two collections that I really, really love. One is more minimal with just hints of color and another Another one is a pop collection where it's just tons of clashing colors and I really, really love them. They're all so fun and if you want one or maybe four for your home, you can now grab these over on my shop. Take care everyone. Bye. Bye.